Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and today we're going to talk about the Funimation Crunchyroll debacle and just kind of my stance on things, how I feel about these sort of things. I've always enjoyed making videos like this. I find them fun where I just to get to sit down and share my thoughts. I used to make these all the time. So if you want me to make more videos like this, let me know down in the comments. But for those that are living under a rock or are not anime weebs uh, like my girlfriend, Funimation is shutting down. And for those that don't know, Funimation is a service for watching anime. But it was also a service where like, if you bought the Blu-ray or a DVD variant of Dragon Ball or something like that, you would basically get a code in the box and you could go unlock the digital version. Uh, that's been a thing with a couple different companies and such that have gone up and down over the years. But let's read the statement from Funimation. Uh, what is going to happen to my digital copies? We understand that you may have concerns about your digital copies from Funimation. These digital copies available on Funimation were a digital access to the content available on DVDs or Blu-ray purchases. Please note that Crunchyroll does not currently support Funimation digital copies, which means that access to previously available digital copies will not be supported. However, we are continuously working to enhance our content offerings and provide you with an exceptional anime streaming experience. We appreciate your understanding and encourage you to explore the extensive anime library available on Crunchyroll. This is the world we live in. Um, I'm not gonna try to incriminate myself here and be like, yo, start pirating. But like, <laughs> if you've paid attention to my YouTube channels or anything of that nature over the course of the years, one of my most popular videos on my old channel was when the Pirate Bay shut down, I, sh I taught people how to use archive.org to see an archive of Pirate Bay and still download torrents because the torrents were all backed up on archive. Uh, same with EMU Paradise. Some of my most popular videos on my channel are 30,000, 3,000, 8,000. You know, you combine those all together, that's what, 41,000 views, is how to download ROMs and ISOs from EMU Paradise even though the uh, website removed the official download links. And the official statement, as far as I remember, from EMU Paradise is basically once the server stopped getting paid for, everything's gone. They did not produce their own official backup which is really scummy because there's a lot of stuff that's going to be just long gone because they didn't remove just download links for things like games, like ISOs for GameCube or PlayStation or Game Boy or ColecoVision. Like EMU Paradise supports a lot of stuff. We'll go here real quick. So if you go to like ROMs and ISOs, there's Atari 2600, Jaguar, Bandai, Playdia, the Xbox, Namco System 12, Modeler. A lot of the MAME stuff I was told will not work with MAME these days, so it's not as big of a deal. But like the Capcom systems, the CDI, like there is so much on here that a lot of these other ROM websites do not host because they're not popular. You're not going to make any ad revenue from having an Atari link section on your ROM website because... How many people have ever played an Atari Lynx? Yes, I have one in my attic. I am a special use case. <laughs> it has Clax on it. It's such a fun game. If you've never played it, play Clax. But like a lot of the stuff, once the download links no longer work on this website, they're gone. There's already stuff starting to disappear from this website, which makes me very happy that at one point I did archive pretty much as much as I possibly could from EMU Paradise. I just don't know where I put the folder. It's somewhere in here. Simulation? No, that's just Dreamcast. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, I did a huge backup of EMU Paradise, 
it's oh it's on my other external drive okay uh but it's also uploaded to a hidden google drive that i used a script to duplicate a thousand times yeah a script to do that exists to a thousand different google accounts um <laughs> You would think I would use that to get to 6,000 subscribers on YouTube. Anyway, that's beside the point. I'm not going to trick the system because that can get me terminated. But once this stuff is gone, it's gone. We're living in a digital age now, and that's going to be a terrible thing come 50 years from now, maybe 100 years from now, when systems in 40, 50 years, like computers in 40 or 50 years, can't even run a 32-bit application without some form of emulation or who knows maybe they can't even run 64-bit maybe we'll have 128-bit computers by then maybe we'll have quantum computers by then just sitting in our kitchens uh giving us cancer um you know it's this digital age we live in it's not like 1600s 1700s it's not even like 800 you know ad or whatever where they have books, they have the stone tablets, they have the carvings on cave walls. We live in this digital age now where if a solar flare went off right now and hit the earth perfectly, all of our electronics would be dead, except for the ones that were created very recently that do happen to have protections against it. Majority of the world would be back into the Black Stone Ages. I don't know why it's the Black Stone Ages. It's it's not. It's just the Stone Ages. Um, they would just be, basically, that'd be it for technology. That would be completely it. That'd be gone. It'd be gone. So, when archivists, 100 years from now, 200 years from now, if the human race is still around, want to learn anything... They have to hope for people that are archivists now that are going to fight to keep, you know, let's say this computer system I have next to me. I'm going to do everything in my power to keep it running for the next, you know, five, ten years, despite what technology leaps and bounds we're going to take. You know, when I'm 60 years old, in my mind, I'd like to think I still have this computer to play the games I enjoy now because I know for damn sure they're probably not going to work on the computers in 60 years so we're in this digital age where everything's just going to be lost if it's not archived properly in a way that computers you know if the data isn't duplicated over and over to the newer technologies of storage mediums that can be read on newer computers and emulated and used on newer computers as technology grows we're going to lose all this stuff think of all the time frame of TV from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Think of it like that. If you wanted to watch something that was on a really obscure channel, let's say your cable TV had channel 64 and it was some like, I don't know, food network with some obscure TV show at 2 a.m. Do you think anybody has an archive of that TV show at 2 a.m. from 1990, from let's say July 11th, 1998? No, I doubt it. And if somebody does, that's pretty amazing. Actually, there is somebody. There was one person that was constantly, I think they were mentally ill, but they were constantly recording TV broadcasts from like 1990 something all the way to like 2000 something and they just have this huge archive of vhs tapes uh the web archive has them now but we're in this digital age where stuff is going to just go it's going to vanish there is so much stuff let's say the obscure tv show that's on netflix or something like that that gets a couple thousand views and that's it if they remove it from netflix and nobody put it up on a piracy website it's probably just gone Here's the other thing that pisses me off with this whole Funimation thing, now that we're nine minutes in from my ranting. <sighs> Service update. Oh, this should be good. Thank you for being a loyal Funimation customer. The Funimation service is ending on April 2nd, 2024. Fun fact before we get into this, Crunchyroll used to be a piracy website. It just had so many users and was so legit that it, they started being able to charge people and people accepted it. 
Mm. <laughs> How the turns have tabled. Um, <laughs> you can still access the content you love on Crunchyroll, which houses one of the largest anime libraries, subs and dubs, catalog, and simulcast, as well as games and the Crunchyroll store. You don't have to leave your Funimation watch history and Funimation queue behind. You can migrate them over to Crunchyroll. Please log into your Crunchyroll using your Funimation credentials. If you already have a Crunchyroll account, your account will be merged and you will be prompted to migrate your user interface information at login. Sorry. Um, anyway, let's continue. As part of our transition to Crunchyroll, the price of your new Crunchyroll plan... Oh my god, when I heard this... So I watched the Moist Critical video, which is what triggered all this and made me want to make a video. Your Crunchyroll plan will increase from $54.95 a year to $99.99 a year. Now granted, that's what, like 8 bucks a month? Uh, I'm not good at math. <laughs> At eight thirty-five a month. That's not that much, but that's what double. I just realized you can't see the calculator. <laughs> so fifty-four ninety-five divided by twelve. No, fifty-four dot ninety-five divided by twelve. So it was four dollars and fifty-eight cents a year or a month. Ninety-nine ninety-nine divided by twelve is eight thirty-three. So basically, it's doubled. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not mad over 8 bucks a month, but it's the fact that it's nearly doubled. That's insanity. They could have saved themselves so many headaches on the internet with people freaking out about this. This. They could have saved themselves so many headaches if they listed it from a monthly value. In all honesty, like, who decided to write this up? Because this is stupid. Then again, I guess, I don't know how Crunchyroll works. I've never used it. I'm admittedly a pirate and an archivist through and through. You can just look at what I've done with Lithtech. You can look at what I've done with the 1320 Nitto game series. Like, if... Let's look at the Nitto game series. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's use this as an example. I have a V1 and a V2 folder. I have a Nitto backups. I have a everything Nitto. I have a CIE folder somewhere. I have a 1320 archive. Um, so what we're going to do is 1320 archive, everything Nitto, uh, Nitto backups. And V1 and V2, just these folders. Yeah. I archived so much stuff from 1320 Legends, Racing Rivals, 1320 Challenge. I still have my original installation directory from 1320 Legends. It never got deleted. It's been 10 years. Over 10 years. If I remember right, this is going to keep climbing. I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to keep climbing. 47,000 files and 1,328 folders. I need to delete a few folders. Eight of them to be precise. Okay, never mind. <laughs> now it's up to nearly 2,000 folders. But this is my point. I have archived so much stuff. And because of people like me, like Kennard, like uh, Espionage... Uh, like Secret Agent, all of us being kind of maybe a little overly obsessed with a 20-year-old PC game, we had this stuff archived. We still had the knowledge on the back of our heads of like kind of how the game worked. Me, because of the hacking standpoint, so I knew what tools to use to modify it. But Kennard knew it from the gameplay perspective. One of these days, I'll get his permission, and I'm going to do a video about his write-up about 1320 Challenge. He has this I don't even have a word to describe it. He has this Word document um, that is, if I remember right, it's over five pages explaining every little detail of 1320 Challenge. Every single detail. 
with screenshots and arrows and explanations and it's insanity. I didn't realize I was about to hit 500,000 files for 1320 challenge and legends. Oh my god. 10,000 folders. The only thing that I'm going to say is not going to show up here that's on my other external hard drive is the Racing Rivals server, server archive. I have two copies of that server archive. That server archive is 400 gigabytes. That's not here. Insanity. But, yeah, so it's going to double, and they could have saved themselves some grief. But even still, that's... It's ridiculous that it's, from the sound of it, I don't know, is Funimation owned by Crunchyroll? That's the sound of it that I've kind of gathered from other things that I've looked at. They're just simply closing Funimation and then opening, making you move over to Crunchyroll to just have you move over. I don't know. I don't understand. But, I mean, at least they say you may cancel. I think it's going to be okay for them. I think they're going to have a spike in users, obviously, because you have to move over if you keep wanting to watch your anime content, um, your weird weeb people content. Uh, someone's going to get mad. Um, but I don't know. It's just, it's scummy. This is the digital age we live in. Stuff is going to vanish. You don't own anything anymore. Even think about the phone in your pocket. I know I can keep going on and on and on on about this like think about your apple iphone what if hear me out hold on how many of you feel old right now seeing this logo leave the comment below how old do you feel tap tap revenge it was the guitar hero for mobile kind of the thing, what Tap Tap Revenge was, if you don't know, hold on. Tap Tap Revenge was a game for iOS, kind of around, um, I think the very first one came out, kind of around when like the iPod Touch 2 came out, because I remember having it on my iPod Touch 2nd gen, and modding the shit out of it after I jailbroke it. But you basically more played with the rhythm rather than the actual uh guitar parts there were mods later on that added five rows and converted guitar hero songs to tap tap revenge uh like tap tap metallica uh metallica revenge tap tap metallica master of puppets i'm not gonna play the audio obviously but oh my god how old are we this was 14 years ago like, people just got really good. It was... Tap Tap was so much fun. I remember you could play multiplayer on a single device. iPhone users, do you want to play this game? You can't. As of iOS 11, Apple removed all support of 32-bit applications from iOS. Completely. Gone. If you came over to the archive and wanted to download... Tap Tap Revenge, or Tap Tap Reloaded, or Tap Tap Metallica. You can't. And there's two reasons you can't, unless you live in Europe. There's two reasons you can't. One, sideloading applications on iOS. Even if you create yourself a free uh, developer account for your Apple device, you only get two weeks before you have to re-sign the application, reinstall it. Or... You have to use like some hack service like Troll Store and hope for an exploit that doesn't exist in iOS 17. Or you have to hope for a jailbreak to use AppSync and I don't remember what the other thing is called. Anyway, if you're in Europe, sideloading I believe is uh, required now in iOS. Or Guess what? You just can't because it's a 32-bit application. Tap Tap Revenge was never made for a 64-bit uh, device. And since Apple removed 32-bit application support entirely from iOS in iOS 11, we're on 17 now, you're not going to be able to play this game. You have to have, like, I have next to me an iPhone 6 Plus that is on 
iOS 10 got something. Uh, and something. This is on. Dear Lord, where's it's such an old iOS? I can't even find the version number. Oh my God, what are you on? Ten point three point two. I can play Tap Tap Revenge on this phone if I sideload it because it's jailbreakable and I can use uh, app install exploits. Or I can use the iPhone 5 that's in my desk. Or I can use the iPhone 3GS that I just found that I didn't know I owned. Um, either way, there's options. Or the two iPads uh, that I got the other day. There's options, but they're all on outdated hardware from the time frame. So digital assets are dying. And the problem with that is unless there's a proper archive that is just you know, duplicated over and over to keep it up with newer systems, we're going to run into problems of you don't own anything. And my point with the whole iPhone thing was you don't technically own your device because you can't do literally whatever you want with it. If I wanted to install Linux on my iPhone 6 Plus, I still can't. If I wanted to put Linux on my Android phone, I can. There's a system called Ubuntu Touch that has a complete compilation tutorial and you can compile it for your phone. I can put Ubuntu on my Android phone. I can put it on my Razer phone too. I can put it on a Redmi Note 9 Pro. I can put it on, um, I think it's compatible with a couple Google Pixels. That would be a fun video. Anyway, that's beside the point. I'm getting off topic. Point is... You don't own your digital assets. You don't even own kind of the devices that are in your hand. It's even getting to the point that there's a car over in China that you can buy it for a flat fee of $600 a month and it include not buy, rent. And it comes, it's buy as a service or something like that. It comes with insurance every month. Uh, all maintenance is built in uh, and, all, and the price of the car and all that. And it's like $600 a month or something for a brand new car. Not a bad deal, but it's just getting ridiculous. And I really am kind of worried about the future because of it. So, I don't know. Give me your thoughts in the comments down below. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. I need to stop recording before I talk for an hour.